Good morning. I'm Neil. I'm the assistant here at Narrabri Anglican. Friends, I'm not the biggest fan of poetry. I think it's because often I don't really get the, the word pictures. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day, says Shakespeare. Is he saying that his true love makes him uh, sweaty and annoyed? But if you do get the image, poetry is powerful. All oh, right, a summer's day is pleasant in England. That's a good thing. In today's passage, Jesus paints a word picture too, but he doesn't take any chances with these blokes. Nothing too subtle. He says, look, I'm sending you out as sheep among wolves. Well, they couldn't miss that one, could they? You're a defenceless, domesticated food source, and I'm deliberately dropping you into a pack of hungry carnivores. Predator, prey. Well, today's passage, the rest of the passage, pretty much unpacks that rather alarming word picture. But I want to show you how and why Jesus uses it. See, life as sheep among the wolves will be hard. And so he wants to prepare his sheep and give courage to his sheep. And here's how he does it. He says, you'll be hated as my sheep, but safe as my sheep. And then you'll feel divided as my sheep, but welcome as my sheep. You'll be hated but safe, divided but welcome. And that's where we're going to go today, as Jesus prepares and gives courage to his trembling sheep. Why don't I pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. As we read it, would you apply it to our hearts by your Holy Spirit, that we would have courage and be prepared as life, for life in the world as you send us out. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, before I dive into uh, what Jesus tells the 12 here, I want to ask how this might apply to us as well. I think I'm going to say from the start that the principles, if not the details, apply to all of Jesus' sheep. Now, I say that because Jesus warns here in the sermon before this mission trip what will happen to the 12, but they don't happen in this trip, but they do happen into the future. And not just to the 12 either. The book of Acts shows us all sorts of everyday sheep among wolves. It's not just missionaries or pastors, but any of us who are truly his sheep. See, if that's you, it's a bit scary, isn't it? So let's listen now to how our master's warning and encouragement gives strength to his people. I'm going to read in four sections today, starting with Matthew chapter 10, uh, verses 16 to 25. And the text is all from the Christian Standard Bible. Um, and it's included on the printout on, on the webpage here. So from verse 16. Look, I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore be shrewd as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, because they will hand you over to local courts and flog you in their synagogues. You'll even be brought before governors and kings because of me to bear witness to them and to the Gentiles. But when they hand you over, don't worry about how or what you are to speak, for you will be given what to say at that hour, because it isn't you speaking, but the spirit of your father is speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death and a father his child. Children will rise up against parents and have them put to death. You'll be hated by everyone because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to another. For truly I tell you, you will not have gone through the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher or a slave above his master. It's enough for a disciple to become like his teacher and a slave like his master. If they called their head of the house Beelzebul, how much more the members of his household. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, as I said, scary stuff. I'm at point two on the outline if you're following. As my sheep, you'll be hated. 
So what will life look like as one of Jesus' sheep? Well, hard. On the food chain, food chain, it's wolves up here, sheep down here. See, the disciples are being sent out as witnesses to the arrival of a king. But a king most people in Israel have rejected. The call to repentance is not welcome. It wasn't back then and it's not now. For he's not just the king of the Jews, is he? Jesus is the Lord of your next door neighbour and your workmate, your family. You'll need to have your wits about you as you go out. You've got to be smart. Yes, my sheep, says Jesus, you're going to get hurt. There's no fair play in the wild, so don't expect it. So what does he say? Therefore, verse 16, be as shrewd as serpents. Well, that's going to look different in each situation, isn't it? Like their master, the disciples would sometimes step up to the conflict, but sometimes they'd lay low. Be a brave sheep, he says, but don't be stupid. We need to be as shrewd as snakes, but we don't need to be suspicious of everyone. We don't need to treat everyone as if they hate us. But we should not be taken off guard when they do hate us. And being prepared for that will help you with the second part of this verse. Verse 16, be shrewd as serpents and as innocent as doves. You see, if we're constantly taken off guard by rejection, we'll eventually just batten down the hatches, won't we? We'll protect ourselves. We'll have hardened hearts to the world that he sent us into. But the disciples are being sent out to bring Christ to people in their preaching, in their deeds, but also in their character. They're, they're part of the message. They're sent out to reflect Jesus. So the sheep need to be smart, but they still need to have a heart for people, compassionate, vulnerable, shrewd like Jesus, innocent like Jesus. And that's going to mean you get hurt. Hearts get hard to protect themselves from hurt. But how could we show Christ to the wolves if there's a wall around our hearts, around our lives? No, the sheep need to expect persecution. But persecution brings the opportunity to show Christ. The disciples will be taken to court and flogged by their own people, Jesus says, brought before the authorities. But this all happens, verse 18, to display Jesus. Persecution brings the opportunity to show Jesus. And Jesus is ready to help when it comes. For he then goes on to say, verse 19, you will be given to say what to say at that hour. Because it isn't you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father is speaking through you. See, the words given by the Spirit witness to Jesus. And the dove-like innocence under pressure is a witness to Jesus. A response of grace and his words paints a portrait of Jesus. They may or may not like the picture. It might lead to further rejection, even hatred. But that's up to Christ. The sheep are his witnesses. He's been there before you and by his spirit he is there with his sheep. And that persecution won't stop in a hurry for the disciples as they bring Jesus to a rebellious Israel. Sadly, it simply won't be a matter of opening the gates of heaven uh, to a people eagerly waiting for their Messiah. The people of Israel ought to be expecting the kingdom of, of God to come. He says, show it to them. Give them the opportunity to embrace it. But if they don't, move on. And why does this persecution come to Jesus' sheep? Well, it's pri precisely because they are his. In verse 25, see, in the previous chapter, the leaders of Israel said that Jesus was in cahoots with the devil. So what of those who follow him? See, friends, it's fitting that you be hated because you belong to Jesus. Yes, he's the Lord. Yes, he's the saviour, but he's a hater because he's a threat to the wolves. Wolves don't answer to anyone, even the king, so they think. 
So they certainly won't answer to his little sheep. So Jesus has prepared his sheep for a pretty tough life, hasn't he? And yet he's about to tell us that we don't need to be afraid. Well, let's find out why. Let's keep reading from verse 26. Therefore, don't be afraid of them, since there's nothing covered that won't be uncovered and nothing hidden that won't be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. What you hear in a whisper, proclaim on the housetops. Don't fear those who kill the body but are not able to kill the soul. Rather, fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Aren't two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's consent. But even the, even the hairs of your head have all been counted. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. So we're at point three, if you're following on the outline. But as my sheep, you'll be safe. See, the wolves hate Jesus. So the sheep are hated because we belong to Jesus. The wolves hate Jesus, but the sheep are safe because we belong to Jesus. From this little section, I'm going to bring out five, actually three, three reasons why we're safe and don't need to fear. You ready? Reason number one, being his sheep means you don't need to fear because you'll be vindicated. Vindicated means to be shown to be on the right side or in the right to the wolves, it looks like we're on the wrong side, the losing side, the loser's side. But see there in verse 26, there is nothing covered that won't be uncovered, nothing hidden that won't be made known. See, we don't have to justify ourselves or defend ourselves against the wolves now. In fact, we can show them kindness and mercy and grace. See, we belong to Jesus. And we'll sit next to him on his throne when he returns in his own good time. You'll be seen for what you are. You don't need to fight for yourself. And that means you can speak the truth also, because that truth will one day be seen for what it is true for seen for what it is too. Just as you will be seen for what you are. That's reason number one, you'll be vindicated. Reason number two. Being his sheep means you don't need to fear, you're safe because you're immortal. If you belong to Jesus, you will never know death. True death. Yes, your body will die, but that death is the door to a fullness of life that you will never experience here. So you don't need to fear the death of this body. Across the globe, there is an estimated 1,000 people who this month will die because they take the name of Jesus. Well, see, when they're killed, the wolves think that they brought about the worst thing that could possibly happen to those sheep. But after the death of their body, what can the wolves do? They can't touch those thousand sheep now. So, verse 28, don't fear those who can kill the body but are not able to kill the soul. Rather, fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Jesus isn't saying to fear God in the same way you might fear the wolves. The wolves are trying to harm you, but they don't, can't really do that much. But your Father has your good at heart, and he has power over eternity. See, the fear of God is a fear of, of awe and reverence and a fear of what it would be like if you weren't his sheep. But you are his sheep if you're doing to Jesus so reason number three, being his sheep means we're safe and we don't need to fear because we're cherished. Verse 29, aren't two sparrows sold for a penny, but not one of them falls to the ground without your father's consent. But even the hairs of your head have all been counted, so don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. So even if the wolves do kill you, do you think it's outside your father's control? If he's mindful of a bird, then he's going to be concerned about one of his own children, isn't he? Someone joined to Jesus. See, your hairs fall out without you even noticing. 
And yet your Father, who rules everything, has them, each of them numbered. He's concerned about your hair. Well, he's the, you're the apple of his eye. What can the walls do to you? All they can do to us is kill us. So we're safe on that front. We're vindicated. We don't need to fear. We're immortal. We're safe because we're cherished. But we're not out of the woods yet. Some close loyalties are about to be tested. Let's keep reading on from, uh, from verse 32. Therefore, everyone who will acknowledge me before others, I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny him before my Father in heaven. Don't assume that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace but a sword, for I came to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies will be the members of his own household. The one who loves a father more or mother more than me is not worthy of me. The one who loves a son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever doesn't take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Anyone who finds his life will lose it, and anyone who loses his life because of me will find it. Friends, the hard truth is Jesus divides. I'm at point four on the outline. Life as a sheep will often feel divided. As humans, we crave intimacy, don't we? Well, can anyone watch that happy scene in the movie where the family is around the Christmas tree? Can anyone watch that and not feel something? Perhaps it's bitterness because you've never had that. Perhaps it's longing because you've lost it. Or cynicism. Oh, that is so cheesy. Has anyone ever had that? Perhaps it brings you joy, though, because it brings your own family to mind. See, we're made for love. Intimacy is good. Loyalty is good. It's good to our family, but it's not ultimate. When Christ takes over as Lord of our life, we have a new love, a new loyalty. And this love, this loyalty is ultimate. But this new loyalty brings a problem, doesn't it? Our new loyalty is obvious, our good master who poured out his life for us. But what about our old loyalties? See, friends, they must now submit to the new boss. But it's not always easy to side with him, is it? It's going to be a real cost when you acknowledge him before others, when you say, I'm with him. Because that so often means, I'm now not with you. And that's bound to cost you a friendship or even closeness with a family member sooner or later. It may cost peace in the family. And things might have been terrific in the family before you were a sheep. And now things are at best tense. Loyalty to your new master means distance. It can with your family. And the wedge that is Jesus may well see that distance increase. It may be a sudden division. It might be a slow drift. But to survive that strong pull of the old loyalties, you're going to need a new kind of sight. Friends, you're going to have to learn how to look into heaven. Friends, if you're joined to Jesus by faith, Jesus says in heaven, he's with me to his Father, and you've shown that you're joined to him when you say, I'm with him before others. I'm with Jesus. You see, one day you'll be eager to acknowledge Jesus as Lord when he's revealed that he's coming, but he's Lord of all now. So let's be eager to acknowledge Jesus or Jesus as Lord of all now. It's going to cost you the approval of the wolves. But what's that compared to the approval of our Lord and Saviour before his Father? Friends, I am speaking to myself here as much as anyone. 
Why don't I want to pin up my colours? Because I'm a sheep for who, for some strange reason, craves the approval of the wolves. Have mercy on us, Lord. Help us with this. Give us that view into heaven. So can you see why Jesus says in verse 34, I did not come to bring peace but a sword. Friends, the wolves hate Jesus, so they hate Jesus' sheep. It might be a cold war often, but there can never be peace between them. And you'll see that division when those loyalties are tested. And where are they tested more than in the family? See, their approval is so important to us, isn't it? And why wouldn't it be? They raised us. Our siblings protected us at school. But that land of domestic harmony has an invader. Or at least that's the way your family might see it if they don't belong to him. And this Jesus, he will not share his devotion. He says, he won't share your devotion to him. He says, verse 37, the one who loves a father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. The one who loves a son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. I was so encouraged uh, this week to hear of uh, uh, someone I know who kept going with their COVID service uh, when um, uh, his unbelieving uh, family dropped around last Sunday morning. When the family comes to stay, perhaps for the weekend, and you drive off to church, yes, that is going to happen one day, when you drive off, it's going to seem like betrayal to them. Oh, as you say, as you drive off, wouldn't it be better, if, if a better witness if we just stayed? No, friends, I don't think it would. Driving off might feel like carrying a cross that Jesus speaks about here. But don't we want to live worthy of the one who's been sent to the cross for us? It'll feel like losing your life as you lose the approval of those you love but friends, look at verse 39. Losing our lives for the sake of our Lord and Saviour, friends, that is where we will find life. And, excuse me, <coughs> and when our family sees us do that, lose our lives for his sake, even if it offends them, it is such a powerful witness to how, how all-satisfying our Lord is. Loyalty to him is worth any cost, even the disapproval of your dad or your brother. Well, friends, how Lord has given us his disciples hard words, hasn't he, to prepare us for life as his sheep amongst wolves. As your sheep, you'll be as his sheep, you'll be hated, but he's followed them with great encouragement, has he? hasn't he? You'll be hated but safe. He's now said you'll be divided, but again he gives courage. You'll be divided but welcome. This is our last point, number five. Let's listen to our Lord one last time uh, from verse 40. The one who welcomes you welcomes me, and the one who welcomes me welcomes him who sent me. Anyone who welcomes a prophet because he's a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And anyone who welcomes a righteous person because he's a righteous, he's righteous, will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones, because he is a disciple, truly I tell you, he will never lose his reward. Friends, you'll be divided from the family you've always been loyalty, loyal to, but divided from them, you'll be welcomed by a new family. You will be welcomed by some for the same reason that you're divided from others, because you're a sheep, because you're joined to Jesus. See, it's him who divides, but because of him, you're welcomed. Of course, the original context for this encouragement was to the, was, uh, the mission to the twelve. The Gospels uh, do, do tell of some in Israel who 
welcomed those 12 because they came in the name of Jesus. And if they welcomed those who come in the name, they welcome the one who sent them, Jesus. And if they welcome Jesus, they welcome the Father. How refreshing it must have been for the 12 to be welcomed in the name of Jesus. But you can see that Jesus broadens out that idea further than just the disciples um, and these missionaries. He talks about prophets and, and, and righteous people, people who are right with God through faith and, and disciples. I don't think he's trying to set up a distinction between those people, but a broad description of the sheep. See, the reward for uh, the righteous person um, is Jesus. He's right before God because he belongs to Jesus. And so the reward for the person who welcomes him is the same. They're both welcomed because they've both been welcomed by Jesus. So they're divided from one family, but they are joined as one in another family. Friends, to close, we live in a world who hates our Lord, their Lord. Belonging to Jesus will be like sheep among wolves, will be hated but will be safe, will be divided but welcomed. But we're not told just to stick it out until he returns. He sends us out with his spirit that we might testify to his goodness and his authority to save and rule. As fellow sheep, let's encourage each other to do just that. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for our Master who has made us his sheep. By your Spirit, would you enable us to go out and reflect him to the wolves, that they might see his goodness and his power. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.